What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Disobeyish here for a tutorial video on the uh, Suron Black X Edition. Uh, today we are going to be doing a tutorial on how to upgrade the seat. I got the float seat. Uh, we're also going to be upgrading to the 54 tooth two piece sprocket in the back. And I also got uh, floating rotors for the front and the back. Um, so we're going to be showing you how to, guys how to put those on and hopefully testing them to see what they did to the bike to make it better. Um, I do a lot of trailing on this bike, so um, the sprocket should definitely help, and hopefully the uh, rotors help brake noise and stopping ability. Uh, the only thing I've done to the bike so far is I have the Shimano H03Cs, the brake pads. I have them in the front and the back. I also have the Shinko 244 Golden Boys on the front and the back tires, and I have the 3-inch Pro Taper. Uh, high-rise bars in the Stealth Edition. I really like the Stealth Edition. A little bit more laid-back, more my style. Um, so the first thing that we need to do in order to get this tutorial started is we need to wash the bike because the bike is dirty. Take it off road all the time. So we're going to get that cleaned up, get it dried off, and we'll go from there. So let's get the bike outside and get started. Alright, now that we got it outside, the first thing we want to do is get the battery off. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Um, if you have a Suron, I am going to assume that you know how to get the battery off, but in case you don't, uh, we have our two plugs here, um, and we also have our breaker switch in the back. You want to make sure you turn that off first, because if you don't, you might get shocked trying to take these other two plugs off. So we'll flip the breaker. We'll take these two plugs off, um, simple plug and play, remove those, get them off to the side, and we're going to pull our battery out. Pretty simple. we we'll set this off to the side. Alright. Now that we got our battery off, we want to set the bike up to get wet. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cover these two plugs that we just unplugged from the battery. Uh, what I have here is a simple Ziploc. I'm going to put those in there, get them as tight as possible, and then I'm going to use a rubber band to seal the bag, hopefully. Uh, this is to prevent any water getting on these plugs. That is your main system to get the bike connected to the battery. So you definitely want to be careful with that. Okay. Got that all set up. Close this up. Take my key off. Alright, other than that, I mean it's pretty simple. All I have here is a bucket filled with some water, some car wash soap. I have a uh, non-scratch scotch pad uh, that you would use for your dishes. I also have a rag. Uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Let me get the bike wet. You don't want to use a powerful uh, stream of water. So if you have a uh, connector on the end of your hose, just make sure you don't turn it all the way high. And all we're going to do really is knock the dirt off of the bike now. You get everything wet, not worried about anything else after we got the battery connectors sealed off. So right now what I'm trying to do is remove most of the mud. Got a lot down here. We want to get that off of the bike. And again, I, I see a lot of people scared to wash their bikes. Um, it is obviously electronic. Seems like Mona has done a pretty good job of sealing off of those electronics. Um, so I haven't noticed any issues at all. Alright, we got most 
off with the light off. Go ahead and turn the water off. All right, now if you know how to wash a car, you know how to wash a bike. Should be pretty simple. Too. For the most part, I got the bike dry. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set it in the garage for a couple of hours, let it uh, air dry for the rest of that time. So we'll catch you guys on the flip side. What's going on, YouTube? Uh, the bike is dry, so we're going to go ahead and get started on the first of our upgrades. The first upgrade being the new floating seat from Luna. We're going to attach this to the bike. Um, first, we have to take the old seat off. Uh, only thing that we need to do in order to do that is we have four pop rivets, uh, three here and one in the back on this side here. Uh, this little plastic piece comes down and there's going to be two bolts in the back, two bolts in the front. I believe they're number 12s. Take those off. Old seat comes off. Put the new one on. It should be good to go. Um, I haven't even taken the plastic off of the new seat yet. So this is it. I don't know how I feel about the stitching. I might have to redo that, but looking at the seat, it is definitely more comfortable, and I do imagine that it's going to be a nice ride. Uh, when I take the seat off, I'm going to have the option of whether or not I want to take this off and keep it off or put it back on. Not sure yet how I feel about it. Um, to me, it doesn't seem like it's keeping any dirt off of my back, and I have a feeling that the bike would look better uh, with it off. Uh, so we'll see. Um, I might take it off and leave it off. So let's get started with the first mod. I'm going to take these rivets off. Uh, four on this side, four on that side, and we'll get this seat taken off. Alright, so first we're going to take the uh, seat off. Uh, first thing we need to do is get these three pop rivets off. Uh, the only tools you should need is a blade, razor blade, and or a small flathead screwdriver. I'm going to try to use the flathead screwdriver first without messing up the plastic a little too much. Um, if that doesn't work then I will use the blade. So these are our three rivets here and if we look underneath here that's going to be the other rivet there. And there's also one on the corresponding side here. So we take these three out first then we take this one out then we got three on this side here and we take that one out. After that should be two bolts here and then there's two bolts there we take those four off we should be able to take this off next and then our seat should come right up all right let's get started first thing you do is just pop these little rivets out well i want to try to do that without messing up the plastic Might have to use the blade after all. Okay. That's one. And as we can see, these rivets here are two pieces. I was actually able to get both of them out one time. I was lucky. Let's try again. We got the second one out. Let's see. I was lucky again. Got both pieces out. Right, this is going to be easy. It looks like the seat has already been removed before. That might be why this is easy. Let's get this third one out. All right. And we got the other piece out on that one. Nice. Nice work. What I'm going to try to do now is take this side off. First, while I'm over here, Let's see if I can get that one off. And 
that's coming out. Let's see. Both pieces, nice, good work. That is what I'm talking about. All right, so we got that one off, we got those three off. Now let's go over to the other side. All right, we got the other side out. Let's go ahead and get these three out here. Hopefully they're as easy as the other side. And come out complete. Let's see, and there we go. Got two pieces there. Got two pieces there. Last one. Oh. Yeah, so you gotta try to do it without scratching up this little plastic piece here. I will say, I didn't try the uh, screwdriver for very long, but the blade works really well, so if you're gonna do this, I suggest using a razor blade. All right, we got three rivets there taken out. We got that last one underneath there. Let's go ahead and get that one out. Nice. Let's see here. Okay. All right, that came out, two pieces there. So I got all of the rivets out. And one thing I did forget to do was take this uh, rear light off. Um, so I'm going to do that now. Shouldn't be a problem. It looks like it's just a Phillips head screwdriver. So we'll go ahead and take care of that now. All right, I got all the rivets out. Uh, only thing I need to do now is take off this rear light here. Um, that's what I need to do first at least. Forgot to do that earlier. So it's a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm just going to go ahead and take that off. Just let that dangle there. Those two screws there. All right, that should be good. This little plastic piece now should come off. Good, good. We'll put this off to the side. And now, only thing I have, I have the two bolts here, and I have two bolts here, and I believe those are number 12s. Let's go ahead and get those off. There we go. Set those off to the side. Now I believe let me just take those off. Take that up. And there we go. Now if you want to replace the rear fender, you just unhook it from the bottom of the uh, old one like that. Push forward and untake off. So we're going to set this old seat off to the side and the rear fender. Looks like there was a little bit of water underneath there so we're going to take care of that real quick. And all we have to do now is put the new one right on there. See how it looks first, and then we'll make our decision. Um, just don't know. I think I'm gonna go ahead and ride with it off for right now. We'll hold on to it just in case. But I do like the cleaner look. Forward, take off. That easy. All right, let's put it back on there, and let's get these bolts tied down. 
Alright, we got my four bolts here. Sorry, I keep calling them bolts. These are nuts, guys. These are nuts. We are gonna just screw them in lightly for right now by hand. Okay. Okay, I got the four nuts on there, hand tightened. We'll go ahead and tighten those up now. Alright, let's get those tightened down. Looking good. thing I need to do now, get this little plastic piece back on there. And that should be quite simple. Let's get over to the other side, get these other four in, get this bolted back on, and the seat upgrade will be done. Only thing we got left now, get the three rivets in here, the one rivet there, and get this light attached again, and our seat upgrade will be done. I will say I already love it without the rear fender on there. Um, I don't see myself putting that back on. This looks absolutely dope. I'm really, really excited. Can't wait to see how it feels. But let's go ahead and get this back on there. All right. Get that right in. All right. So on the other side, I went this way down. And I think when you're putting them back in, it's going to be easier if you start on this side, put this side in, and then go back this way. The only thing we have left is to screw this light back in. We'll do that right now. Two Phillips head screws. I would do the one closest to the light first because that was the harder one to take off. And we're just going to screw it until it's almost all the way in. Grab the other screw, get this one in, good to go. Alright, and there we go. We now have the Luna floating seat upgraded on our Suron Black X, and uh, this thing is pretty. I can't wait to try it out. What's going on YouTube? Got the first mod done. Seat is on, looking good, loving it. Uh, the next mod is going to be the front wheel rotor. We're going to get that off and back on. Once we do that, we're going to go ahead and tackle the rear wheel, get the rotor and the sprocket on and off at the same time. So let's go ahead and get this front wheel off and we'll go from there. All right, in order to get the front axle off, you're going to need a number eight Allen wrench. And in order to get the front brake caliper off, you're going to need a number five Allen wrench. First thing I'm going to do is get the brake caliper off, and then I'm going to use this number eight to get these uh, front axles off. So here we go. Now we're going to use our number eight. We have two sides. One side is a lock, 
and the other side is the actual axle. The picture with the lock on it is the lock. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen this side up first. And there is an arrow here that tells you which way you need to turn. And I believe it's backwards. Take this off first. And then we come over here to the other side. This one also has an arrow on it to let you know which way to turn. This is the actual axle. Once we take this off, the wheel should slide right off. Okay, there's the axle. I don't want the whole thing to fall over. There we go. All right, axle off, wheel is dislodged. Save those parts. Now mine fell off, hopefully yours won't. But you have these little pieces here, these seals. You wanna make sure you keep those. You don't want those to fall off. Hmm. All right, the wheel is off, bike is secure. Let's go ahead and one, two, three, four, five, six, get these six bolts off and get the rotor replaced. All right, now that we got the wheel off, we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, rotor off. We've got the six bolts here. I believe they are T25 bolts. These are uh, locked tighted on with the blue, so they're gonna be a little hard to get off. So I'm gonna use a little power tool here. Uh, you do wanna take it slow. Uh, you don't wanna strip these bolts. You're not gonna reuse them again, but you do wanna be careful. So uh, here we go. Six, all right, I got all six of them fairly loose. I'm going to set these bolts aside. We are not using those again. The new kit did come with new bolts. We are going to put some more Loctite on those. So, we can get that ready. Now, I'm going to match up your rotors here. Correctly. And what I'm going to do is there's an arrow on here. Uh, it's right here. I'm going to match this arrow up with this arrow here and I'm going to put them on the exact same way. Hey, that one did go back in there. Hmm, that's weird. Okay, I think I see the problem here. There are two size bolts in there. I did not notice that at first. Let me fix the issue here. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is my fault, not Luna's fault. All right, so I figured out the problem. It was my fault. Looks like Luna has included two different size screws. So we're gonna put some gloves on and get this done the right way here. Take that old one back off. I got the six screws I need here. And let's go ahead and get those locked tight and put on.
Now, uh, according to the internet, these bolts here only need to be tightened down to 22.5 inch pounds. Um, unfortunately, I do not have a torque wrench. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this on the lowest setting. Go ahead and get them tightened down and then tighten them down by hand after that. And we're going to do this in a star pattern. So that it tightens down evenly. See it doesn't go very far. You just want to continue in a star pattern to your bed. Okay, and then from there I'm going to wipe off any excess Loctite. Being careful not to touch the rotor, you don't want to get any anything on the actual brake part. Alright, and that rotor is on there. We're going to tighten that by hand and put it back on the wheel from there. Okay, now remember this is only supposed to be tightened down to 22.5 inch pounds. Um, that is not very tight. So we're not going to go very far with this. Again, I don't have a torque wrench, so this is not going to be exact. Um, but I figure, you know, you guys should be able to figure out how tight you want that. These bolts were a number a T25. Last one. Okay, and then we're going to go around in a circle, make sure we got them all. Alright, we're good. That rotor's on there. Let's get this back on the bike. Let's get the back wheel off. Now that we got the uh, rotor on the front wheel, we're going to get the wheel on. Get the wheel back together. Now, in order to do that, we need to get these back on. So these go right here in the middle. And one on the other side. Okay. Then we gotta get these up. So this is the hard part, at least for me. I don't, I don't see an easier way to do this. Okay, that one's in, that one's in. Okay, looks like we have it on. Now let's get our axle in. Remember this goes in the same side as the rotor. Okay, looks like we're in there. Bring this down a little bit, let that hold it. Need our number eight Allen key. Let's tighten this down. There we go. Being careful of the caliper. Okay, I'm not sure what you're supposed to 
tighten this bolt down to as far as torquing it. I usually make sure I get it pretty tight. I'm comfortable with that. Now if you wanted to, I guess you could put a little bit of Loctite on here. Keep that tight. I'm not going to do that. Just going to go ahead and put this on. Get it screwed down. Again, you want to get it as tight as you feel comfortable. This feels like a plastic piece, so I wouldn't go too tight. But you definitely want to make sure that that does not back out at any time while you're riding. Well, you're not going to have a good day. Get it on there pretty tight. Next step is to put the caliper, caliper back on. We got our two bolts here. Our number five Allen key, that's correct. And just put these back on. So you want to make sure you slide that over the rotor. Slip that first nut in, bolt in. And work it in a little bit. There we go. Get that second one in there. This is uh, so far one of the easier mods you could probably do to your bike. Uh, the seat was pretty easy as well. Um, but these rotors here are not very hard at all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten these down until they're almost all the way tight. There's still a little play in the caliper. And then what we want to do is we want to balance it, um, get the caliper on there correctly and seated properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to squeeze our front brake. And while we have our front brake squeezed, we're going to tighten down the caliper bolts the rest of the way. So go ahead and squeeze that front brake. And then let's get those caliper bolts tightened down. front wheel a little spin see if we got it straight see if we hear any noise okay we definitely hear a little bit of noise now these rotors are a little thicker so it might take a little bit of time for Looks like my wheel is actually a little off center. That might just be the wheel, an issue with the wheel. I'm hearing a little bit of rubbing. I do have the 244 Shinkos on here, so they are a lot thicker than the stock wheel. Let's check out the brake power. All right, yeah, that's pretty good right there. Um, these brake pads are pretty new. So that could also be an issue. Um, and I don't hear any binding and no, no issues that way. All right, I might have to take a look at this later, but for right now, we're gonna call this mission a success. Now let's start working on the back wheel, get that off so we can get the rear rotor and the new sprocket on there. All right, now that we got the front wheel on, we're gonna go ahead and take the back wheel off. There's a couple ways you can do that. The first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and take off the chain 
And the way you do that is you have your little clip here. You're going to use a screwdriver, flathead, or uh, whatever you feel comfortable with taking off that clip. And once you do that, you take the front little plate off. There's a, uh, these two bars here slide out and the chain comes off. After I do that, I'm going to take the caliper off. And then I need to take the, the rear axle off and then the wheel should be free. All right, let's go ahead and take care of that. And it should be pretty easy to get this off. If you've ever had a bicycle in your life, you probably know how to take a chain off. Um, it's just like a bicycle. All right, so that piece is off. Front little facing plate comes off. Now you do have to be careful. There will be two washers or uh, O-rings behind that front plate. You're going to take those off. Save those. You're going to need those for later. You got to be careful with those. Alright. These little clips here come out. Go, a little less pressure on them. Uh, I can strong arm. Okay, I'm doing now, just be careful with that O ring back there. Alright, that's one. That's the second one. Now you can kind of let your chain hang. I do have a little piece of cloth down there to kind of keep the chain from getting dirty. I'm going to save this little back piece. Make sure you have your two O-rings there. You're going to need that for later as well. All right, next part is going to be make sure you have these O-rings seals on here as well. There should be two of them. You're going to need those later. All right, the next part is to get the caliper off. You're going to need that same 5 millimeter hex to get the rear off. Let's go ahead and take care of that next. All right, we've got the two bolts here. Let's go ahead and loosen those up. There's one, two. So I don't have the proper bike stand, um, so this bike is moving. Working on it. it makes it a little more difficult, but anything is better than nothing. So, and I didn't want to flip the bike upside down. So, we get these two screws off, caliper comes off. I'm gonna set that to the side, make sure, save that for later. Okay, in order to get the rear axle off. We have a 17 millimeter nut on this side. And I have a socket with a little small attachment there. And on this side, I believe it is a six millimeter hex. And really all you need to do with that is just put the hex in there to hold it. And you're gonna crank on this side. So I'm gonna push that tire down, hold this. Loosen up this nut here. That was already pretty tight. All right. And once you get it loose, you should be able to take that off. 17 inch nut comes off. Alright. Now you have these tension plate things that are going to slide. As you can see, it's already slid. Um, you're going to need these, one on both sides. So make sure you take that off. And then all you have to do is take the rear axle out. And the bill should be free. There you go. Alright, let's go ahead and take off the sprocket. 
and the rear rotor and get those changed out. All right, YouTube, now that we got the rear wheel off, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and change the sprocket. Um, I think that one's going to be the harder of the two to do. Uh, this is a good time to have the tools that you need. Um, unfortunately, I don't, so I'm going to have to kind of jimmy rig this. And I think I have the setup. Uh, you do need a 6 millimeter uh, hex to get these screws out. There's five of them. Um, I don't have anything else except for this one. Luckily, it has a hole in here. So I'm going to go ahead and use these to get them off. These should be on here pretty tight. I've already gotten one or two of them kind of loose. Um, and now I'm going to get the rest of them. Um, you're definitely going to want to use Loctite when you tighten these back up. You don't want these to come loose. You try not to put too much pressure on the wheel. Because I don't want to damage the rotor in case I need to use it again in the future. Um, I don't have a wheel stand or anything. Alright, that's all five of them. Should be able to get them off. I was almost thinking I wasn't going to be able to get these off, but uh, luckily I had something that did work. Set these screws off to the side. Uh, I believe you are going to reuse these. Um, if I have the torque specs for these screws, or uh, yeah, these screws, um, I'll put them up on the screen on the bottom here to let you guys know. I can't remember them off the top of my head. I know that there is one though. Um, what I will say is, you want it to be hella tight. And that should be your goal there. All right, so this sprocket did not have any markings on it. So uh, there is some markings on here and I would have liked to line those up. Unfortunately, the sprocket does not have that. So we're gonna go ahead and just put them where we want. That's the last nut there. Let's take that off. This actually was not very hard at all. Thought it would be a little bit more difficult. There we go. Now all we're gonna do, and I don't know if you guys can see this, um, I don't see any real sharp teeth or anything, but this sprocket is a little beat up. Um, yeah, it's probably good that I'm replacing it. Alright, let's grab my Loctite. That's all five of them. Let's go ahead and get these tightened down and we'll uh, go ahead and get to the rudder. Alright, now when you're tightening it down, you definitely want to do the start pattern again. Um, you're going to go ahead and tighten it down to where it's just touching it. And then you want to move on and get them all down at the same time. I don't know if anybody's found, uh, you know, the perfect mix of what you guys should use. Um, I do know a lot of the guys in my crew now are uh, trying to do the upgrades, the ASIs, uh, at least the 4000s. A couple guys have the 8000s, but... And dude's crazy, so I mean, I don't know, that's up to you guys, but I haven't got there yet. Maybe one day, all right. So, I've already went around in a circle once, I'll do it one more time just to make sure because again, these you do not want to come out. All right, 
that is on there pretty tight. Uh, these are going to be the four bolts that I'm going to need to tighten a little tighter uh, once I get the wheel back together. Right, now that we got the sprocket on, let's go ahead and flip this over and take off the rotor here. Now I believe these are uh, supposed to be T25s. Um, it looks a little big to me, so I'm going to try a T27. Get these off. Open up the new one. See if there's any alignment issues. Remember, try not to touch the outside of the rotor. That's where the brake pads touch. You don't want any grease or oil on those that section of the rotor. So I found the arrow, we're going to find the arrow on this one, and we're going to line those up. Alright, looks good, last one is off, rotor off, and we have it lined up. Okay. Now, put these six bolts in, a little bit of Loctite, and get some gloves, I'll be right back. Alright guys, I got my gloves, got the Loctite ready, let's do this. So through the back tire there, that was a little bit of a task. Sorry about that, guys. All right. So now we're going to make sure we put on our alignment block here and our 17-inch nut. Okay. 
attach that back on there. We're not gonna keep, we're not gonna tighten it down all the way. Because we obviously have to do a little bit of adjusting here. But we are gonna tighten it down to hand specs. All right, so now that we have our wheel back on, the next step is to add the chain links that Luna sends to you with your sprocket. Um, I believe there's two links. Yeah, looks like it. So we're going to go ahead and add those onto our chain now. I know some people like to keep the same length or only do one. Um, and then they'll just, uh, they'll have their alignment all the way to the front of the bike or, or to the front of the, uh, rear fork here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and put both of them on. Let's see here. Yeah, get this clip on however you can without damaging your hand. There we go. So what I did was I hit it down a little bit with my wrench there just to get it started. And then I used the uh, flathead screwdriver to get the rest of the way down. Now, uh, the only thing that we need to do is attach the piece that we took off originally. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Put the front piece on with our two gaskets here. We're going to attach those there. Okay. Gaskets are on, the front piece is on. Okay, now what we need to do is get this clip on there again. This time I'll just try to use a screwdriver to get it on because this clip is a little older so it has a little more room to move and it has clipped on how it should. Now, uh, we have our chain on, we have our wheel on, it's still loose so that we can do our alignment and we also need to make sure that our chain is tensioned to about half an inch of play and the play is from the up position all the way to the down position so uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and open these tensioning nuts so that I can get started on that. In order to do that, you're probably going to want two open face number 10s. Um, you can do it with one, but to be honest with you, it would be easier to have two. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to loosen this nut here. I'm going to do that with this one. In this side now. Okay, now that we have both sides touching our uh, alignment block or whatever this thing is called here, what we are going to do is try to get them aligned. Now this side here is back pretty far. If I'm going to look at it, I'm going to say it's at the second notch 
between the second and the third notch. So what I need to do now is push this side back in order to match that same energy on the other side. Now looking at the chain here, I still have a little bit of slack, but I'm on the one, two, three, four, almost the fifth notch. So uh, I might need to do a little bit more adjusting. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this one all the way back to there. Let's now, and it looks like I'm at the one, two, three, between the three and the fourth one. I'm going to try to see if I can get to the third notch. Um, and by the time I do that, it's going to be pretty tight. And I'll loosen up the other one to get to the third notch as well. And hopefully that should be where I need to be. Alright, it looks like about three and a half, and I'm going to say that's about half inch of play. That looks good. And once we have those aligned properly, we're going to go ahead and close this back up. And we're only going to hand tighten it for right now. Okay. And then what we want to do, grab our 17, grab our 6 mil, and we're going to tighten down the axle all the way. Uh, again, I don't have the proper torque spec on that. Uh, if I find it, I will put it down below in the video there. Um, otherwise, you're going to tighten this down by hand as tight as you possibly can. Um, if this falls off, you're going to have a really, really bad day. So, I'm going to set the bike down like that. I'm going to start in on this bolt over here. Alright, here we go. It's pretty tight. Let's check our tension again on our chain. Still looks good, about a half an inch. That looks good. Smart man. The only thing I have left is to put our rear caliper back on. Um, I actually have the bolt still in the caliper. So we'll put it over the brake rotor. We will hand tighten them down to get them started. And you are going to need your number five, five millimeter hex to get these tightened down. We are going to do the same thing we did in the front where we tighten them down by hand, leaving a little bit of space. And then we're going to activate our brake to get it seated properly. Let's get it down right there. Okay. Okay, not too tight. Again, you want it to be able to move, shift a little bit. That looks good. Go ahead and put the Allen in there. All right, the only thing we need to do now, activate the rear brake, and then let's lock down this caliper. All right. We now have a floating seat, floating rotors, 54 tooth, two-piece rocket, the Shimano brake pads, the Shinko tires, and our three inch high rise pro taper stealth bars. Um, this bike is looking absolutely beautiful. Can't wait to get it out, do a little test ride. Hopefully I'll get you guys some footage. We're gonna put the battery in. We're gonna test the rear wheel, see how true that is. And then we're gonna get this back out on the road, guys. Alright, 
I got the battery in. Just want to check the rear tire now. Looking good. Get it out on straight, see what it does.